In this video, I'm going to talk about the reality of 8K 360 cameras and what people aren't telling you about what you'll need in order to get the best out of them. And believe me, even though your camera may have cost you maybe $600 or even $1,000, the extra equipment you're going to need in order to get the best out of them could cost you thousands more. Hi, my name's Saab Johal and thanks for joining me. If you're new here, think of me as your guide at your side and on your side too. And you'll know all about liking and subscribing, but do comment too, eh? I'd love to know more about what you think about this video. Cheers. As well as the Kandao KuCam 8K 360 camera, even smartphones are getting in on 8K video capture. Samsung's recently announced S20 phone can record 8K video. There are rumors that upcoming cameras from Canon and Sharp will be able to do the same, and the number of devices that record in 8K will only grow in the coming years. However, today's cameras and phones are still mostly recording in 1080p, and with 4K TVs only recently becoming affordable, is 8K recording worthwhile? while? Well, it depends on what you want to use it for, the time you have available for post-processing, and the equipment you might need to buy to make it all possible. When we talk about 8K, there are a few things to keep in mind. One is that 8K is a lot of pixels. What with a resolution of 7680 by 4320, it's four times the resolution of Ultra HD 4K, which itself is four times the resolution of 1080p HD. The Samsung S20 is the most mainstream 8K recording device right now, and all sizes can record 8K at 24 frames per second. Now, all those pixels take up a lot of storage space. The 8K video on the S20 is recorded in the HEVC codec at 80 Mbps. This means a five minute video will take up about three gigs. That same video in HD would only be a few hundred megabytes. So expect to fill up that internal storage on your device rather quickly. Now the cameras rumored to have 8K capabilities coming out in 2020 will record at higher frame rates, but there are no details as of the time of recording this video at what data rate or codec. Now higher data rates mean even bigger file sizes, which means more space and processing power needed for post-production. For example, the KuCam 8K is 10-bit. The vast majority of video content today is 1080p, also known as HD. Depending on how it's shot and how it's played back, HD looks pretty good. Even on 4K TVs, it looks great on small screens of mobile phones and tablets. So why not just record everything in 1080p? Okay, so there are two main reasons and they're related, cropping and zooming. Let's say you're recording a scene with your shiny new Samsung S20, for example. There's a limit on how far you can zoom optically, if at all. So you might not be able to get close enough as you would like to, to what you're recording. With 8K, you can crop in on the image significantly while still having at least HD video. And the other main benefit for 8K recording is similar. You can pick and choose what's in the image, cropping out what you don't want and cutting between the interesting parts. Essentially, you can mimic a multi-camera setup with one camera. Imagine two people having a conversation at a table in a restaurant. With a single 8K camera, you could record one wide shot of them both, and then while editing, cut in between that shot of close-ups to each of them, similar to what you'd be able to do if you had three cameras. And that's just for a smartphone flat image. You can imagine what you'd be able to do with a high resolution capture 8K 360 camera. Well, in theory anyway, what's it like in practice? We all know that 360 cameras are starting to become more mainstream with their ability to record everything and then let you create a highly crafted over capture 16 by nine video of just the interesting bits or what you wanna focus on. The problem has been that even models that record 5.7K don't look as sharp as a normal 4K camera because they're only showing one small portion of the entire video sphere at one time. And this is usually at 1080p. However, the under $600 Candao KuCam 8K, as its name suggests, records 8K video. It's likely that future models from other companies are gonna do the same. And this extra detail is great for people who want to view these video spheres in VR headsets. But it's also great for people who want to create compelling standard videos 
just using the interesting angles using that over capture from their 360 videos. But does it really? Let's think about VR videos with a headset first. Now VR videos need to be a higher resolution than regular videos in order to appear sharp. A normal human eye with 20-20 vision or acuity is able to distinguish a maximum of around 60 pixels in one degree of sight. For example, a regular 48 inch 1080p monitor at a six foot distance or an iPhone 6 screen at 15 inch distance yields a about 60 pixels per degree. Now the problem is, is that a common 360 video format of 1080 has about six pixels per degree, which is the equivalent of a human eye vision of about 20 to 200, which is terrible. You'd only be able to make out the top letter in this chart. And this is why 1080p VR videos are seen so blurry. And what about over capture type videos? How does an 8K 360 camera perform compared to a 5.7K camera? Well, we have a limited pool of consumer 8K 360 cameras to choose from here. It's pretty much the Kandao Ku cam right now, but expect a few more by the end of this year, I think. Is it better than 5.7K cameras like the Insta360 ONE X or the GoPro Max? Well, the answer is not necessarily. If you're a pro who will process this footage using a laptop or a desktop, then yes, you'll get more data to play with and you can get better results. But if you are a consumer that does all their work on a mobile phone or a tablet, then your results probably won't be much better than when you've used your 5.7K camera, if at all. A mobile phone screen is just too small to tell the difference and tricks like in-camera sharpening will usually do the job of fooling your viewers on Instagram and other mobile platforms if you're just doing a simple reframe job. It's only on VR headsets like the Oculus Quest or the Go where you're gonna see a big difference. But producing that video after you've captured it, well, that's where the costs start to mount up. Even if we've captured higher resolution 360 video, how would we deliver it? Capturing higher and higher resolutions is only half the battle, and honestly, it's the winning half. Those bigger files from those bigger sensors means that the processing of these files needs more storage space, faster processes, and better knowledge and skills from the user. And all of this costs both time and money. Money that you might need to spend on a faster $1,000 plus mobile device, which can perhaps process 8K if at all, or perhaps moving your whole workflow to a new, more capable and more expensive $2,000 plus laptop or desktop machine able to process video you've captured from your $600 camera. So your $600 purchase just got a whole lot more costly in terms of added time and hardware and software purchases and learning how to use them all together in a new workflow, which is gonna be changing over time. So you need to ask yourself, is it really worth it for you? What's the reality of an 8K 360 camera for you and how you like to capture and produce and share your videos? It's a lot easier to capture 8K video than it is to actually deliver an 8K experience. That's why if you're a regular consumer and you don't have a specialist business need, I recommend that you stick to the 5.7K 360 camera class that's currently available. So long as you've got a decent smartphone and or a decent relatively modern desktop or laptop computer, you'll be able to get the best out of your videos you've captured with your device relatively painlessly and with minimal additional cost, if anything at all. So how do you see this playing out in the future? Still interested in 8K 360 consumer cameras like the KuCam? Or have you been bitten and put off by the experience? or perhaps you're taking a wait and see approach for now. Be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'll join you there. Be sure to subscribe to make sure you see more of my videos and check out these videos next if this experience has been interesting for you. Thanks again for watching. Cheers and go well.